Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make, his known, make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all of his wonders, glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his wonderful deeds which he has done, his marvels and the judgments of his mouth. Psalm 9, 1, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The first opening uh, scripture was from 1 Chronicles 16, 8 through 12. And I want to give thanks to the Lord today. I looked at a video uh, on the internet yesterday uh, at about 9 o'clock at night and uh, saw the eye of the storm passing right over my son, his wife, my grandson, and thousands of my friends and church members when I was at Southside Baptist Church. It was an interesting satellite picture of the hurricane for the eye of the storm was going immediately over the top of where they live. And yet the winds that caused all of the destruction were out on the Atlantic Ocean and out on the Gulf. Immediately around the eye, instead of the greatest intensity of winds, was high winds, but not devastating winds. And the amount of flooding that was expected in Tampa Bay was less than half of what they had expected. The water went out and the bay went dry just as they expected, but when it came back in, it didn't come back in with anywhere near the intensity that they thought it would in covering bridges, taking out roadways, flooding homes and businesses. I give thanks. I believe the hand of God was cupped right over the top of the greater Tampa Bay area and I believe it was cupped over that area because of the thousands of prayers that were being lifted up on behalf of those that lived there. You say, well, what about Naples? What about some of the islands? What about the 20 some odd deaths uh, before it reached the United States? I don't know how to explain why God allowed devastation in some of the areas of Naples and Marco Island and the Keys and certainly some of the islands off of America. I do know this. I prayed for the Tampa Bay area even more diligently than I prayed for those other locations while I prayed for all. Considering the size of the storm, the intensity of the storm and the possible devastation, there was certainly much less than what could have been. Five died in Florida. That's a lot of deaths. That's a lot of heartache and that's a lot of pain. But I still give thanks to the Lord for having protected so many people, keeping the damage down so minimal. It won't be minimal to those that lost their homes and it won't be minimal to those that lost loved ones. But it could have been so much worse. And for me personally, I am so thankful for the protection of my family, my former church members, and all of those in the Tampa Bay area that could have been killed, that could have lost all that they have. I give thanks. And that's what God instructs us to do. Paul, when he wrote to 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. First Chronicles says that I give thanks and I make his deeds known among the people. I hope if you have time you'll look at those radar pictures, those satellite pictures of the storm and how God seems to have cupped his hand over Tampa Bay, diminished the winds, kept the storm from doing absolute devastation to a city of millions of people. That's my thought for the day. And that's my thanks to God. I hope that you'll continue to give thanks to him for what he's done.